uh, August 1st, 1985, I had approximately three months on as a firefighter with the city of Cheyenne, and I was at home with my wife. We just came back from the, the mall watching a, uh, a movie, and the alert went out that there was a possible tornado, so we went to her parents' house in Eastridge at the time, and because they had a basement, we didn't, and uh, on our way there, we got to, I heard the call out over the radio for all off-duty Cheyenne firefighters to re report to their duty stations. Um, I was able to drop my wife off and head into town and to report to my station at headquarters. And lo and behold, on the way there, my vehicle got swamped by the waters over by the Elks, and I had to walk down and force my way into the Heinz building at the time. I'm um, not the Heinz, the uh, Plains Hotel. And I was able to get in and, and wait for the storm to finally uh, recede a little bit so I could get over to headquarters. I walked through waist deep water to get to headquarters to report for duty. And that night we ran calls. Um, we had the only functioning radio system. We were on backup generator power, but our radios still worked. We had the only radios at, at the time working in the city. So we. Uh, we're responding on various calls. Um, I was part of a uh, crew that got onto a bus that was commandeered by Lieutenant Bill Allen from Greyhound at the depot down there. And uh, we were in all the way over to Converse where all the hail, we uh, had never seen that much hail before, but it, it was several feet high in places. Um, wading through water, checking on houses, uh, basements, sunken vehicles, and uh, we had a fire in the police building. We had to go and, and help try to put that out, but the problem was it was an electrical transformer and it was on fire in the basement, and the basement had several feet of water in it. So we uh, were spraying dry chemicals through the, the window and trying to get the fire out. Finally it did, and we got the power off. So it was a, it was a pretty hectic night. You, you went from situation to situation to situation, and um, the following morning, I got to go home about 5 the following morning and got about an hour's sleep, got some breakfast, and reported for my regular duty assignment the following day. And we worked all day and into the night um, running various calls for service, flooded basements, um, down wires. Um, I was able to go through chest deep water. That was my job. And so we checked a lot of vehicles and talked to a lot of people and you talk about being tired, we were tired and cold. I think the damage um, and the people needing help. Uh, we, you know, we've had several firefighters that stepped off into areas that you couldn't tell and they started to uh, get pulled down the manhole covers that had blown off in the streets. So that, that was probably some of the worst stuff and uh, the devastation was really, really awe-inspiring. That night, you can see, you could tell. It, you can see that and when morning light came, it was not going to be a very good picture. I got to work the downtown area all the way out to Converse. We did go out to um, Ridge Road, out by the Del Range area. Uh, we, were, we were all over town. You didn't work your regular response area. You went for wherever you were needed, you went. Um, when we were on the bus, we were... Uh, stationing out of Station 4 at the time, which was uh, the 18th and Albany Station, which has been closed. Not really. Um, that was pretty, I mean, that was pretty devastating. It, but I did see, the one good thing that I did see was how the people of Cheyenne, and I guess you might say they were resilient because they all banded together, not only the, the emergency services, but the citizens, the businesses, and everybody banded together to help take care of the problem and take care of the issue and get Shine back to functioning and it was pretty amazing.